Hey everyone, what is going on? My name is Dr. Life, and welcome to my review of the Titanfall 2 multiplayer tech test, which was carried out over the last two weekends in August. I'm going to go through it in depth, go through all the different features that uh, at least I tried and I experienced from the game, and I'm going to talk to you guys about what I think about the game and whether, in the end, if I think it's going to be a purchasable game, whether you guys should possibly consider checking it out. This is not sponsor or anything. I mean, I don't even think I need to say that because I'm not exactly a huge YouTuber. It's like I would be offered a sponsor anyway, but I should just say I'm not being sponsored to say anything about the game. So anything positive, anything negative, I've not been told to say this. This is my opinion. Just thought I'd put that across, even though you guys probably could have guessed that anyway, but I wanted to say it just for the record. So, Titanfall 2. I've never actually played Titanfall originally. That game has never, ever come home with me. I've never played it on the 360 on my one. I've never touched it. I know of the game. I know about it. And to me, it just sounded like Call of Duty with wall running and double jumping, which, to be honest, now we think about it, isn't that rare. <laughs> to be honest, we've got two games that prove that that is not quite so uncommon. But regardless, I have seen some videos on YouTube. Didn't watch a lot of them at the time, like one or two funny moments on them. But I just kind of looked at it and went, mm, looks a bit naff, I'm going to leave that. And that's honest, I'm not being kind of critical. It just didn't appeal to me, and that's fair enough, I would have said, because I just looked at it and thought, not my game. But... I tried out Titanfall 2 for a couple of reasons. At first, I thought I could do a review on it, but I also figured that I hadn't tried Titanfall, and to miss out on Titanfall 2 while it was free and it was open to people to just at least try it out, I thought that would be a bit silly from my perspective. Not for everybody's, but for mine, just to give it a go and see what I think. And I figured doing this review is useful for some of you guys who possibly didn't download the uh, tech test for several reasons. Maybe you didn't have space on your console, or you figured by the time you downloaded the beta, or tech test I should say, it wasn't even a beta, it was a pre-alpha, but by the time you downloaded it, you didn't really have a lot of time to play it, that kind of thing. But I wanted to just cover it, and I'm going to go through all the stuff that I tried myself, and then give you my opinions at the end. Okay, Titanfall 2, from the ground up, first person shooter, you guys probably established that by now. And it's a good one. I have to admit, I've played it now. And the first weekend when I played it, I only played it on the Sunday. By the time I got it downloaded, but I actually got around to find it on the store as well. But I, having come away from the first weekend, I was sat there thinking, it's an alright game. I'll probably get bored of it though after a while because there's not a lot to go on. Of course, forgetting that it is just a tech test and there will be more to it. But I still kind of thought, well, you know, even in the full game, there's not going to be a lot to keep me going for more than a month or two. But then I tried it again on the second weekend, and my opinion changed quite quickly, I have to say. I got really into it, and I didn't, I don't know why I didn't to start with, but just playing it, I got more and more into the game, and just the way it works and everything, and I have to say, I really did like it. By the time it closed, I was really annoyed because I wanted to get more time into the game. But I ended up finishing at level 14. I don't even know what the cap was at the end. It might have been 15. They might have raised it again. But I was at level 14. And best weapon, for those of you who haven't got an idea, was the only assault rifle they actually had available for offer, which was the R201. I got that to level 27 because that was the main gun I used. I didn't really experiment a lot until like the last couple of days. But I, I worked that up because I was really good at it. And I figured, well, if I've got a gun that I'm useful with, I can actually give it a go. And that's another thing. Titanfall 2. I'm better at that multiplayer than I am at Call of Duty. I mean, seriously. Titanfall 2 was more my speed, I quite liked it, but I tried four guns, uh, mainly. Uh, we tried, well, actually, no. But going back to weapons, I did try five weapons. So I tried the R201 Assault Rifle, which, as I said, level 27. Brilliant gun, really liked it, it was really balanced. I hope nothing happens to it going into the main game, but of course everything can change because it is only a pre-alpha build. But it was an absolutely fabulous assault rifle, and I would recommend it for anyone who picks up the main game when it comes out. Also tried the car SMG. Wasn't too keen on that one. I think that could get buffed a little bit because it was the range was ridiculous, I felt, even for an SMG. Uh, I didn't feel like the bullets were reaching um, very far. Also tried the alternator. This was quite a good uh, weapon for me towards the end. I picked it up and had a go of it, and I really started to like it. For some reason, I really like the animation of like just walking, um, like sprinting while you have it hit firing because I had like a perk that allowed me to do that. I think it was called Gunrunner. Um, and it just something about it was really cool, but it was a really good SMG. Possibly w might get nerfed before the main game because it was really good. Uh, also tried the L-Star uh, light machine gun for a little bit. Not a lot, but that seemed quite good. I liked the kind of the feel of it and the fact that it was more of an overheating machine gun. Didn't actually have an ammo count. And that's like the rest of the guns. There was no kind of like ammo limit. I like that. Even if some had magazines, you could reload it infinitely. Like you would have an unlimited supply of ammo technically, which I thought was brilliant. And last but not least, I tried the Mastiff shotgun for a little bit. And that was... Mm, it was weird. I kind of felt like I didn't want to use a shotgun for most of the game because 
it was, the maps were so big, I figured I wouldn't get a lot of close quarters, but, I mean, the amount of melee kills I got, it just proved that wrong completely on, like, the first day, and the Mastiff, when I did use it, was absolutely brilliant. It was a really good shotgun, it was a one-shot, really close up, a little bit, could possibly be a little bit stronger, I mean, like, even though it's close combat, some distances that are reasonably close were two hit kills, and I wasn't too keen on that, but, I mean, you know, it just depends on distance, and depends on, kind of, the scenario, you might just think that, because they, they managed to shoot you first, you just go, oh, why isn't that a one-shot kill, just because you think, oh, I wish I killed him, and it's like, no, they, they killed you fair and square, don't rage. But those are the main weapons that I tried, and overall, really good, I like the feel, so anyone who's worried about variety in weapons, there's some really good, uh, things on offer there, and that's just in a pre-alpha, so... I know I'll say that a lot, but it's just to emphasise that it is. Uh, so there'll be a lot of guns to try out a lot more weapons than there were in the uh, in the actual pre-alpha, which will be really interesting to have a look at. So talking about the actual levelling system itself, that was quite unique. I hadn't expected what would kind of go down with that. So for those of you who don't know, you levelled up through what was called merit. So you would earn a merit for achieving certain feats during a game. So if for playing the game, you get a merit. For winning a game, you get a merit. Every time you levelled up a gun, you get a merit. And certain challenges like that. So like you get five kills in the game, you get a merit. Uh, I think there was one for, I think, it, I think it was five kills. There was also one that I got called Good Performance sometimes. I don't know what the actual criteria was for that, but I saw myself getting a merit for that. And also levelling up your Titan, which was um, good for getting merits as well. Every time you levelled that up, you got a merit. And you needed more merits, obviously, as you went along to get up each level. So it got harder as you went along. And I think it was something like 15 merits, something to get to level 14, maybe more. I'm not sure. I lost track. I like that system. At first, it took me a while to get used to it because I was thinking it's just weird that I can't just earn XP for kills. But it's good. It's a different take on it. And I think that's what I'm trying to remember and what I'd like you guys to think about if you probably don't already. It might just be me being closed-minded, but... It's good not just to follow suit, because Call of Duty, Battlefield are two infamous uh, FPS genres, and for Titanfall to step away and do something different, I don't even know whether it did it in the first game. Maybe it did, maybe this is old news, but for me, as an outsider who's never played it before, probably the best kind of perspective you can have, I would say, so you can't compare it to anything, and you can just race it for a game as itself. I felt the merit system was really good, and it was a really welcome change from the XP thing. Although I do like XP in Call of Duty and Battlefield, and it belongs there. Merits were really good for Titanfall 2, in my opinion. Okay, so now I'm going to talk over the maps and the different abilities, and as well as the way the actual like, games and game modes played out, just to kind of round things up. So we're going to start with the maps. There were three maps. The first weekend, there was only two maps, Boomtown and Homestead. For some reason, in my notes, I wrote Home Base. I don't know why I wrote that. That's a... That's a DIY shop, am I going off my head? I don't know. And then the second weekend, <laughs> they introduced Forward Base Kodai. All three of these were good maps. I think the worst one was probably Homestead, because even though it was playing on the whole open base scenario, I don't feel like I enjoyed that map as much anyway. It felt to me like most of the action was happening right at the centre where there was this huge tower you could grapple up to. I'll show you guys some footage while I'm saying that. Um, it was really good for grappling and there were some really good kind of tactical elements to it. But the rest of the map I felt was kind of lacking a little bit, maybe because it was so open. It might just be my opinion about towards kind of like the open levels, but personally I prefer like the, the, uh, the action and having dense maps, which is where Boomtown comes in because that was a completely different map, which is really good. They kind of mix things up. Boomtown was an absolutely brilliant map with all the buildings and there were still vantage points and things like that that were great positions for snipers and great places for the grapple ability to reach up more on that later and finally third map was for base code i definitely 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 loved that map that was the best one out of the three in my opinion there were loads of little secret spots and things like that like there was a secret uh shoot you could climb up or slide down that goes from the roof to the inside of the actual building and there were loads of different corridors and hiding spots and things that were just ideal for a game like titanfall 2 and it was just brilliant i grew i took to the map straight away and definitely take it away as the best one of the three uh, so I can only really sing its praises because it was an absolutely brilliant map. It really, really was. Uh, okay, so game modes. So they had three game modes in the pre-alpha build. We had pilots versus pilots, so just classic PvP like team deathmatch. We had bounty hunt, which is a new one. I'll go into that in a bit. And we also had hard point. So obviously PvP, team deathmatch, and hard point. Those two game modes are going to be quite familiar to anyone who's played at first-person shooters because obviously they're very key games, especially in Call of Duty, if we're being honest, and as well Battlefield to an extent. PvP was extremely satisfying. I mean, even though you don't have Titan Falls in it, you can't actually use your Titan. I think it's a really good game mode to test your own abilities in. Sometimes not relying on Titans is a good thing because it makes sure that your pilot has really good uh, weapons, really good abilities, and you actually do have a decent pilot for when you're in a game with a Titan. It makes sure that when you don't have your Titan, you are prepared, and you, t you haven't just ignored your pilot's loadout, and you made sure that they're kitted out and ready to fight when you're not standing by for Titanfall, as the uh, the catchphrase goes, as the, the well-known saying goes in the game. 
Um, so PvP was extremely good. Bounty Hunt was a new game over Titanfall 2, apparently. It wasn't in Titanfall 1. But as far as I'm concerned, probably the best game mode of the three. It was really interesting the way they panned it out. The way it was still one team against the other, but thrown in the middle of that was a bunch of AI characters that didn't really stand a chance against you if you teamed up against them all. And you could get multi-kills on them quite easily, which would have been more satisfying if they were real players, because I can never achieve quad feeds that easily. I'm really quite bad. But... They were really good. It was a really good system, so you'd earn money from killing the uh, AI characters, and you'd deposit it into a bank at certain times during the game and rounds. And you'd also have to fight bounty titans every now and again that would give you a massive bonus that you could also deposit. It was the first to win. I think it was $5,000 in a uh, bounty. Which was really good. I really enjoyed that because as well as having the Titans and it was the main reason that I actually got to try out my Titans because the third game I didn't play as much, I'll say in a minute. Um, it was a really, really good mix of Pilots, Titans, and AI. I think the three blended together really well, and I think Respawn did a fab job with that. I really did, and I really did enjoy that game. I thought it was really good, and it's a really interesting game mode. Okay, third game mode was Hardpoint, or Amped Hardpoint, it might have been called, I can't remember. Uh, the reason I can't remember is because I only played like one game of it, because I played it, and I didn't quite take to it too much. And I'm not saying that that makes the game any worse. I just feel like there are always going to be some game modes on the games that you don't like. And I've never been a huge fan of Hardpoint on any other game, to be honest. There are a few game modes, like for instance on Call of Duty, that I don't like. Um, but the main point is, if you can find something that you like, then you can actually take to the game. And as I've said, I've, been, I've only been singing praises about PvP and Bounty Hunt, so Hardpoint, I'm just going to say, wasn't too keen on it. We'll probably play a little bit of it if I get the game, or when I get the game, should I say. Um, but I'm going to be kind of keeping that to the back because I'm not too sure about that one. Okay, in terms of the actual uh, abilities and the map layouts themselves, there was quite a clever little trick they did with uh, respawning uh, soldiers. They had what I'm going to call respawn zones. So, if you guys look up into the radar now on the uh, top left corner, you guys will see that there is actually a blue zone for friendly teammates and an orange zone for enemy teammates, or at least I'm going to try and get that up there. So, what that represents is it's how the map is so dynamic and how the interactions with the enemy are so dynamic that basically where you respawn is determined by where all the action is happening. And I think that's good and bad. There are certain things that make me kind of think positively and negative to, towards it. Positively because it shows how big the maps are and it shows how dynamic and how every fight is different. I mean, that's what they all say to kind of convey the game. They say no two matches are the same, that kind of thing. But it does really apply there, as, as cliche as it is. But also negatively because it's possible that if you do use that tactic, you could end up pushing a team who perhaps isn't as good or hasn't been like kind of matched together as well. You could push them up against the wall and just keep killing them, watching all the teams spawn in and keep killing them. And that is obviously a downside to the whole thing, but hopefully when the game comes out, there won't be a lot of that happening. A lot of it will be accurate skill-based matchmaking, and that won't be much of a problem. If it is, then possibly opinions on that might change. But I feel like the respawn zones kind of idea and kind of technique the programming for it was really clever and i have to applaud respawn for that it was very good so final thing i want to talk about is abilities now there were five on offer there was cloak there was grapple stim sonar ability i can't remember the actual name of it it might be in the footage and there was another one which i can't remember now that's because the sonar and the one i can't remember are two ones i didn't use they didn't appeal to me that much even though i knew i was going to do this review i didn't feel like i wanted to actually try those out mainly because they just didn't quite appeal to me i didn't feel like i wanted to make use of them but i did ha have quite extensive use of grapple I used Cloak a little bit once I hit level 14, and I did give Stim a couple of tries in a couple of matches. Grapple was definitely a welcome addition to Titanfall 2, even though it wasn't Titanfall 1 and I haven't played it. From what I've heard from everyone else, as well as my own opinions, Grapple was amazing because it added a whole new level of movement to Titanfall 2. And instead of giving you like an exo where you could blast off into the sky and fight people on the moon, it was that high up a jump. The, the double jump on Titanfall is really quite restricted. So even though you can jump and jump again, it doesn't take you that high into the air. And Grapple just kind of mixes it up a little bit. So while all the pilots don't get too high off the ground unless they're climbing onto buildings and things, Grapple takes the players who do have the ability up into a different area and then there's multiple fights happening at once, which is a really, really good um, strategy. And it also mixed up some of the fights, especially for Boomtown and Homestead, where we had those two really keen vantage points, those really kind of obvious ones, the huge tower in Homestead and the red kind of building slash tower in Boomtown. They offered some really good PvP opportunities for anyone with a grapple, and it proved to be really interesting for anyone with that ability to see how it played out, and I personally found it quite good coming away from it. So also we had Stim, which was an interesting one. It allowed you to have increased health regeneration as well as a boost in speed for a short period of time. Personally, I feel like I wouldn't use that for the health regeneration boost because I wouldn't. I'd rather use it for the speed. I think the idea of increased speed is too tempting for people, and that 
while the tactical use of it to regenerate health is really good. I feel like people will be too tempted when they respawn into a fight to just use the speed to boost straight back in and to get back into the fight, even though there's a respawn zone, you know, to get to the front of them and to fight the enemy. And that by that point, their ability is still recharging at the point where they're getting shot and they could really do with using the increased regeneration. I did try the regeneration once, twice. It wasn't brilliant. I mean, if you're getting shot at consistently, you're not going to have a lot of chance to try it. But I feel that people just didn't give it enough time. And I think that in the main game, we'll all kind of give it a bit more of a go. And I didn't myself because... I just didn't get around to it. I was too addicted to grapple. I'll hold my hands up to that. I really did like the grapple ability. So I didn't really mess around with Stim that much, but I think it could be quite interesting in certain kind of scenarios, things like that. And finally, Cloak. I only tried this for one or two games because I wasn't level 14 for very long during the tech test, but it was, it was good, but I felt really disconnected having lost the grapple, which isn't really the best way to describe an ability on its own by comparing it with another, but when I used the Cloak, it felt like it was very good for hiding uh, and going around the backs of fights, you know, flanking enemies. It's a very good tactical ability. But the way I see it is, and it sounds really kind of biased towards an, the grapple ability, but you could either cloak or you could grapple right round because you can go so far and so fast with that grapple. You have like normally about two grapples before you can recharge, depending on the distance. And you could just go right round and kill all the enemies, and it's faster than cloak because cloak it takes longer. You have to be all stealthy about it. By the time you get there, most of the fight could have broken up. So. Personally, while Cloak is an interesting tactic and it's very good for ambushing people who are on their own or unwary of you, which is always a good tactic, I'm more of a kind of person who wants to just get into the middle of the fight. The main reason why my KD in all of the games is terrible because I just run into fights that I can't win. So, yeah, so you'd expect me to say grapple just so I could fight people. But yeah, so Cloak was interesting, but again, probably need to play around with it a bit more. And finally, the last thing that I need to talk to you guys about, obviously, is the Titans. So there were two Titans in this uh, pre-alpha and Respawn made it quite clear in their introduction video that these were not going to be the only Titans and we're going to have a lot more choice, which is good. We had Ion, whose special power was the laser core ability, which was very powerful. I did like that, although could possibly do with an extra boost. I'm not sure in terms of actual Titan armor when you're just trying to take their main armor down. It didn't feel quite so powerful, but I suppose when they're on emergency kind of power levels, destroying it is quite easy. And then for Scorch, we had this huge kind of slam in the ground ability and cloak in the ground in flame kind of to blast people away. I didn't try Scorch that much because I gave it a bit of a go and I'd already given Iron a go and I thought straight away Iron was the best Titan, in my opinion. Um, but the Titans were really balanced. I liked it. I think the key element for a Titan is for you to only really take a lot of damage from other Titans. And I think that was encouraged really well in Titanfall 2. And that I actually stood sometimes just for a laugh trying to shoot a Titan with the R201 just to see how much damage it did. And it barely scratched it. And I'm, I think that was good because it encourages more for you to look out and fight against actual Titans. Because that's what one of the objectives of the game is. So pilots can fight pilots and Titans can fight Titans. And then things can swap around when Titans are destroyed. Other people unlock Titans that they can drop down. So it keeps things balanced. So Titans, brilliant. I haven't got any arguments with them really any key points apart from possibly buffing the laser core and maybe I don't know I'd have to have a look at the special ability for Scorch again to get more of an opinion but quite impressed with the Titans. Okay guys so that about brings an end to the Titanfall 2 tech test review. I know it sounds like I've been overwhelmingly positive I just need to stress again I'm not saying any of this for respawn's benefit this is just my own personal opinion as someone who's never played Titanfall before until the tech test came out and yeah to conclude will I be buying this game? Yes but possibly I might wait a little bit until it's a little bit cheaper I'm not sure whether I will buy it straight away because my only question is possibly will multiplayer get stale and that's a question I can't quite answer because I've never been able to answer any first person shooters with Black Ops 3 I think it's gone stale. Advanced Warfare kind of went stale towards the end but that was because half because I was uh, transitioning to Xbox One and I was messing around with other games that I got and then I didn't really give Advanced Fort Warfare much attention towards the end of its life cycle but I, I do worry that unless there's a very key kind of prestige or like fresh start system on multiplayer for people who reach max level, that things might get stale. That is the only concern that I have about this. But apart from that, I am really, really impressed with Titanfall 2. And I would very much like to say I will be getting the game at some point. Possibly a Christmas idea, I'll say. But I think it will be a very good game to get. And I might be doing some videos on it if I do get the game. So if you guys would like to see that, leave a like down below and leave a comment. To tell me what you thought about the Titanfall 2 tech test. And we'll see what opinions you guys have got in the comments. But yeah, with that being said, thank you guys very much for watching this tech test review. Drop a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new. And guys, I'll see you all in the next video.